David and the Goliath. And if you don't, I'm just going to go down a little bit. I'm not going to read the whole chapter on David and Goliath because it's a lot. Um, but you can. It's in 1 Samuel 17. And where I start is chapter... Yeah, 1 Samuel 17. It is... So I'm starting on verse 4. And I'm just going through it. As you can tell, it's the stuff that I highlighted and then underlined. That's what I'll be talking about. But this is this is something that everybody kind of knows the story, right? There's this giant and there's this young shepherd boy. People look at him like he's a nobody. So let me get into this. So as I'm talking about this, don't think of the Goliath as this giant man. Start thinking about the Goliath. Ask God, ask the Holy Spirit to guide you as I'm reading this. And tell him to reveal to you what your Goliath is. Because at the end of this, this is what this is what the Lord wants to reveal to us. What our Goliaths are in life. And how we're going to overcome those things that we struggle with most. Um, so again, this is 1 Samuel 17. I'll start on verse 4. It says, there was a man who was um, at a Philistine camp. His name was Goliath. He was a huge man. It says his height was six cubits and a span. He had a bronze helmet. He had um, scale armor, bronze, weighing 5,000 shekels. So he was a big guy. Goliath stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel. Saul was the king that he was trying to, uh, Goliath was trying to fight against Saul. So he tells uh, the Goliath shouted, taunted them. He says, Saul, choose a man and have him come down to me. If he is able to fight and kill me, we will become your subjects. But if I overcome him and kill him, you will become our servants. Now, David was the son of Jesse, who was from Bethlehem. Jesse had eight sons and David was the youngest. Now, three of Jesse's sons were already with Saul at war. You know, they were trying to defeat this giant in the Philistine camp. So, so Jesse tells David, his youngest son, who also worked with um, his dad at tending the sheep. So he was on the, on the farm with his dad, you know, kind of helping him out. Something that was not seen as significant. In other words, the three young oldest ones were out there, you know, in the war, you know, doing something major. And David was this young guy, you know, tending to the flock. It says, so his dad sent David to go and, and you know, check on his brothers who were at war and take them some bread and some cheese. And he told them, he told David, check on your brothers and report back to me. Let me know, you know, how they're doing. So it said that Goliath was every morning for 40 days. He went up there and took his stand, you know, taunting the people, uh, the Israelites and, and Saul and the brothers. Can you imagine? He was out there 40 days, every day for 40 days, going and taunting them. Who can defeat me? Who wants to fight me? Nobody. Everybody was scared of him. So Jesse tells David to go take them, you know, to go take his brothers this food and to check on things. So it's, once David gets there, it says David left his things with the keeper of supplies, ran to the battle lines and asked his brothers, how are they? As he was talking with him, Goliath, the Philistine, stepped out from his lines and shouted, unusual, shouted at his usual defiance and David heard it. David asked the men standing near him, what will be done for the man who kills this Philistine and removes this disgrace from Israel? So David's already intrigued, like, hold him up. Who is this guy talking all this crap? What's, what's the prize? So it says when Eli, Eli uh, David's oldest brother, heard him speaking with the men, he burned with anger at him and asked, why have you come down here? And with whom did you leave these few sheep in the wilderness? I know how conceited you are and how wicked your heart is. You came down only to watch the battle. David's reply. Now what have I done? Can I even speak? David said to Saul, let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. So Saul replied, 
You're not able to go against this Philistine to fight him. You are only a young man and he has been a warrior from his youth. Then Saul dressed David in his tunic, put on a coat of armor, bronze helmet. David fastened to his sword over the tunic and tried walking around because it was not used. he was not used to them. He says, I can't go in these things, Saul, because I'm not used to them. So he took them off. Then he took his staff in his hand. He chose five smooth stones from the, uh, from the stream, put them in the pouch, and got his sling in his hand. And he approached the Philistine. It said, David, David, David said to the Philistine, you come against me with the sword and the spear and the javelin, but I come against you in the, in the name of the Lord Almighty and the God of armies of Israel, who you have, whom you have defied this day, the Lord will deliver you into the hands into my hands. And I will strike you down and cut off your head. So it says he reached in his bag. He got his slingshot. He, uh, hit the Philistine with one stone straight to the forehead. It said it sunk in and the Philistine died. He landed on the floor. David goes over there, gets his, um, hit the Goliath's own sword, gets it and cuts his head off. And, and he tells, you know, they were all excited. And, you know, he praised God for conquering this giant that everybody was so scared of. So whenever I looked up the meaning of Goliath, what is Goliath? It says, the spirit of Goliath represents big enemies and giant problems. If you are currently battling with a situation or an entity that is threatening your peace, harassing you, and imitating you, you are facing a Goliath. Some people say the, the five stones in David's bag meant faith, obedience, service, prayer, and the Holy Ghost. Now, so, so I'm thinking, all right, God, what am I going to take from this? What, what do you want me to, you know, how can I relate to this story? So this week, and I'm going to tell you, you know, my, my Goliath is my emotions getting the best of me. I'm very, I'm an emotional person. You know, I see, I see myself very passionate and kind of always overdoing it for people. Not that it's a bad thing, because that's good. It's good that you care about people. If you're like me, it's good that you care about people, that you're quick to help, that you take it to heart. You can feel, you can sympathize for them. But when it starts to affect you, when you start to go off of those emotions, then it becomes something that God showed me. So like I told you guys, Whenever I give these messages, it's because I've either been through it, I'm going through it, or it's something that I'm seeing, or, or God is just like, hey, talk about this. Everything that I've shared, I want to say I have a testimony to be able to say I can relate to this because I've went through it or I'm going through it. So this is something that I struggle with, you know, because I'm that emotional person taking things to heart. I can allow those emotions to come out of my mouth and sometimes it can bite me in the butt. So this past week, I just felt like I had to speak up for someone and that person didn't say, hey, speak up for me, you know, but it was something that I was hearing someone, I was hearing two people talking and I just felt like this person was kind of being neglected or belittled or not significant enough. I just felt like I needed to say something. So as I'm hearing this, I'm like, um, I'm going to mind my own business. I'm going to mind my own business. I said it like three times in my head. I'm going to mind my own business. Nope. Let me just sit back and bam, I couldn't. I felt my heart pumping. I felt like this person needs to be, this person needs to hear the truth that this ain't cool. Even though it was the right thing to do, it was not led by God for me to do it. So we can be, we can put our two cents and we can go step into a situation that we feel like is right and probably is, but doesn't give us the right to always do that. So, so whenever I posted yesterday, 
There's a difference between a reaction and there's a difference between responding. Now, reactions is something that I'm struggling with. Based off of my emotions, I am able to react. And sometimes that's not, that's not the best thing. Most of the time, it's not the best thing because you're going off of how you're feeling and you should be able to push those feelings to the side, not throw them away, not, not make them not valid, but put them to the side and really think, okay, what, why am I feeling like this? Let me think before I start reacting. I didn't do that. I allowed myself to get pumped up and like, uh, uh, I need to speak for this person because I didn't feel like it was right. And so when I, when I spoke up for this person, this person wasn't around. So I was like, Hey, I don't think this was right. If it was me, I'd feel like this. And, you know, I feel like, you know, that shouldn't be happening. And the person told me, you know, it ain't a big deal, this and that. And I'm like, it is a big deal because it's making me feel uncomfortable. I, I'm hearing it. I don't like that. So we left it like that. Well, not even 20, 30 minutes later, I can feel my heart. I've struggled with anxiety before. You know, I started struggling with anxiety in 2016 and 2018. At the end of the year, I had already, you know, overcame that. I was on medications and stuff. And 2018, when I met my husband, you know, we were praying and, and through that, God delivered me from anxiety. And, you know, here and there, you know, throughout the years, it's, it's, it's had its little creep ups where I'm like, uh, uh, so I felt it so strong. I literally, I had never felt my chest the way it was. Like I felt like so uneasy. I was, I don't know if it was just the anger that had built up that I was like, I can't believe this person is saying this. Or the fact that nobody else was saying anything. But I felt like, why did I feel like that if I did a good thing? So later on, I'm leaving. I'm in my car and I still felt like that. I, I literally had to take deep breaths in and now like trying to control my breathing. And I'm like, God, if I did something wrong, I didn't cuss at the person. I didn't scream at the person. Yes, I was angry. But I, I came across like, like I said, hey, this is wrong. I don't think this should be done like that. I think it should be done like this. And how, if I was that person, how I would feel if if these things were said and, and done in the way that they were. And so I'm asking God, show me if I was wrong by speaking out the way I did. Should I have respected and not said anything? But you want me to do the right thing, God. So I'm talking to God, right? I'm like, give me a sign, show me. <laughs> so I put on my Bible app and I'm listening as I'm driving. Bam. I'm like, oh my God. It literally, it said, and I'm, I've been trying to find the scripture. I don't know where it's at, but it's in there because it came from my Bible plan. It said, when be quiet and be still minding your own business so that when others see you, they will see Christ through you. I'm like, all right, God, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Forgive me for stepping out of line. Forgive me for not coming to you first and not asking the Holy Spirit to lead me and to show me when it's okay to speak up for someone or when it's maybe God was just testing me to see if, if I've overcome this emotional uh, person that I am instead of speaking up listening to the Holy Spirit listening and waiting for the Holy Spirit to guide me and say okay this is the one that I want you to speak up for now I want you to say it like this instead I reacted off of how I felt in the past and at all everything that we've every emotion and thing that we experience in life is something from what was done to us, what we've been through. You know, growing up, I had, you know, both of my parents were drug addicts. My mom was in and out of jail. You know, we were kind of like the four kids who somebody had that burden to have to watch and to deal with while, you know, my mom was recuperating. And, you know, throughout those years, you know, most of my childhood, basically all my childhood up into my teens, where we had to depend on other people to take care of us and and do for us, 
you know, here and there, here comments. Oh, man, you know, this girl needs to get her stuff together so she can care of these kids. And um, not being, not felt included, not, not felt like I was wanted. Those things, yes, they happened many, many moons ago. But those things are still things that are in the back of my head. So I deal with rejection and I deal with... Um, you know, getting tossed back and forth. And I deal with the feeling of being unwanted. Though I know whose I am and where I am and, and my father loves me, my husband loves me, you know, I am loved. Those things still, it's like PTSD. If, if I see someone being neglected like that or if I see someone being treated like that, I'm going to react. I'm going to do what someone should have done for me as a child. Um... You know, a person who didn't have when they were little is always going to want to give and and give and give because they know what it is to be without. That's like, you know, something else that I that I, I love to do. I like to give. I like to include people because I had that rejection. I had that, you know, no, you know, she's she's not going to fit in or here comes these kids, you know, those things I struggled with. And so for me to sit on the side and watch somebody, you know, be talked about or, or not included bothers me. I don't like to see that. And so even though I was probably doing the right thing outside, you know, like just just looking in, someone would be like, hey, you know, that's good that you stepped, for, stepped up for this person because it's not right. But because of the way I felt afterwards, I knew something was off. Like I said, I felt so anxious. I couldn't. I felt like I really couldn't catch my breath. I couldn't breathe. And so once I stopped getting out getting out of my emotions, I stopped to respond and ask God, God, did I do something wrong? Why am I feeling like this? That's when he showed me, hey, you don't have to speak up for everything. You don't have to put yourself in that situation, allow me to do some work, allow me to convict that person, allow me to change that person. What I should have done was, yeah, it bothered me, but went off and prayed for the people that were talking. Maybe then God would have stopped the situation, gave me peace and, you know, done his work. But here I go in my emotions, like, uh-uh, this ain't gonna happen right here. I need to say something because this is enough. And in the end, I'm the one that feels like, oh, man, now I got to apologize to this person that I just got revealed today. I'm like, all right, God, I, I said, I'm sorry to you, God. Now do I have to say I'm sorry to this other person for kind of stepping in on something that didn't even have to deal with me? And he's like, yeah, go ahead and apologize. So that's another big thing. I'm okay with apologizing, okay with admitting that I'm wrong. But this is still something that I struggle with because I felt like they were in the wrong. And because of that, it's hard for me to say, hey, my bad for talking about, for stepping in and, and trying to help this person. So my question to you is, what is your Goliath? You know, I was talking to a, a sister today and she's like, my Goliath is me, myself, because I'm always quick to respond. I'm always quick to throw my two cents in. And, and I'm like, well, it can be yourself. There's something, there's either a characteristic, there's a trait, there's this thing that you deal with that you can't seem to overcome. It could be, so a Goliath represents big enemies, giant problems. Any, any situation you're battling with that robs your peace, that's harassing you, that's Im imitating you, that's keeping you up at night what is that goliath in your life that you have not handed to god because we got to learn to respond and not react when we're responding we're thinking we allow it to go through our brain we use our judgment and wisdom we ask god god guide me in this what am i supposed to do here because what i want to do is this and it might be feeling like it's right but ultimately, everything we're supposed to take to God, yes, it's hard. That's why I'm talking about this today, because it's very hard. But we have to at least try. 
And when we try, there's blessing and obedience. It's not going to happen overnight. Just like it's not going to happen overnight for me. I'm going to have to learn to zip it. Unless God reveals it to me. Hey, yeah, go ahead. Talk about it. Do something about this. I want your hand to be involved in this. We don't have to involve ourselves in everything. And so that's what we need. That's what I, I want you guys to, to think about today. What is the Goliath in your life? What do you need to give to God? What what area in your life do you feel like it's maybe overpowering you? That's gotten you into some trouble that you feel like you have no filter on. You might not even feel like it's wrong. Like me, I, I didn't feel like it was wrong me standing up for this person. I felt like I was doing the right thing. But it was wrong how I did not let God allow me to do it. I did it out of my own. And so, suffered the consequences. So that is today's message. Let me do the drawing. So anybody that's on here that I haven't, didn't hear, if you comment, you get uh, entered into next week's drawing for the gift card. I um, mail most of my gift cards out unless... Like you're close by and I'm not too busy. Even then I still mail them because I get sidetracked and busy. And it's just hard for me to stop on my routine to go drop somebody off a card. So I like it that I can just mail it out to you. You'll get it within that next week. It's a $10 gift card. And um, this is, you know, it's just God put this in me to do it. And so I'm just being obedient and allowing him to use me at this platform. So let's pick out the two winners. And then we'll pray. And then we'll see you guys next week. God willing. If you share it, great. If you tag someone, great. If you comment, great. Whatever the Lord puts in your heart. Alright, here we go. Two people. Dolly. Reynero Montgomery, Miss Dolly. I didn't see her on here yet. She must be busy or working. So Miss Dolly. And then Vanessa Guzman. It's a first time winner for her. Vanessa Guzman. She came on last week. All right, so those are the two that won. So I'll reach out to them and see what gift card they want. Let me pray us out. Thank you, Father God, for this for this evening, Lord. Thank you for a word, Father God. It's always perfect, Father. You know exactly what you need to speak to your children, Lord. I just pray that this message goes forth, lands on good soil, Father God, and it changes the minds and the hearts, Lord. Every time you speak through me, Father God, it's it's a correction. It's a it's advancement for us, Father God. It's wisdom, Lord. I pray that we receive this, Father God, and and it, and let them know that it's nothing that I speak of, Father God, but that, that I really hear out and, and speak what you want me to speak, Father. Lord, I just pray over the finances that I continue to be able to do these Thursdays, Father God. I pray over the people who are listening, Lord, that you would reveal to them their Goliath, Father, and that they would give it to you, Lord. Show them Show them what their hindering is, Father. Show them those things that need to be laid down at your altar, Lord. And allow them to find peace and rest that you're going to continue to work in them, Father God. And continue to reveal to them, Lord. I pray for each and every person, Father God. And I just thank you for their time that they've, that they've given you, Father God, and me, Lord. I just pray that they come back with a willing and seeking heart, Father God, just to hear from you, Lord. I pray that every word that I speak, Father God, that they, that they, that they receive from it, Father God, that this just not be a, a Thursday to receive gift cards, Father God. Or just to hop on here, Lord, but that they're actually receiving, Father God, that something just stirs in their hearts, Lord, and that their their minds begin to change, their their language begins to change, Father God, that the fruits are evident, Lord. I pray for travel and grace for anyone who's traveling right now, Father God. And I just pray that the the glory go to you, Lord, because ultimately this is all you, Father God. It's in your son's mighty and precious name we pray. Amen. All right, everybody. God bless you. See you guys next Thursday.